Okay, let's get this Hulk Thor bullshit over with. It it boggles my it boggles my mind that I even have to explain this. It really does. I I mean it's like you're hopeless as a, as as a, as a generation of moviegoers. You're hopeless. Okay, let's use, since we're talking about Thor and Hulk, let's use comic books as a good example. Um, <laughs> use comic books as a good e You guys don't even, you guys don't even, how many of you even have ever read a comic book, really? Really? I, to you, comic books are something that, like in a museum, like comic books, I've, I've heard of those. Okay. You're not, it bothers me when you call yourself fanboys of, 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 of the Marvel movies because, oh, I'm a Thor fan. I, I'm a fan of the Avengers. I like Black Widow. Okay. I'm, I, I, I guess I'm old school because when I hear someone say, I'm a fan of Thor, that means you collect the goddamn comics of Thor. Not, I saw a movie of Iron Man, so now suddenly I'm an Iron Man fan. No, you're a fan of the movie. You want to be, a, you want to say you're a fan of the movies? Fine. Don't say you're an Iron Man fan unless it's, you know, another one of you trendy bandwagon, bandwagon jumping, I don't know how to think for myself, morons. Don't ever tell me that you're a fan if you've never owned a god at goddamn comic book. Sorry, I. Uh, okay. In comic books, since none of you've never ever read one, I'm gonna explain something about how comic books work. In comic books, as the years go by, uh, a character will have. Uh, different writers, a different storyline, different development, so they change. The Hulk happens to be a good example. There used to be a time, and I'm dating myself here, where it was literally just the Hulk smash Hulk. So let's say you were reading the Hulk during the t time when it's the Hulk smash Hulk. And then you stop reading comic books, and uh, a few years go by, and you see the Avengers movie, and you go, hey, I remember liking the Hulk, I wonder, wonder what the comic books, what, I wonder what's happening in the comic books, and you go back, and you see, oh my god, you have like, smart Hulk, and it's like, wow, I guess I missed a few issues, explaining how it went from Hulk smash Hulk, to smart Hulk, that's my reaction, to this, you had one type of Hulk in Infinity War, and then you had a different type of Hulk in Endgame. It was like, did I miss a movie? Did I miss, like, a, a Marvel short? Like, if they had at least spent time other than cheap-ass, lazy exposition, because if they had spent the time to show a scene where Banner was actually doing the experiment where he wanted to separate them, but something went wrong. Uh, it, it ended up having a result that he didn't want, and they merged. Then it'd be like, okay, it's still stupid, but at least this way it's only a ten-foot pole being rammed up my ass as opposed to a tree trunk being rammed up my ass. Okay, I've had this saved up for like freaking 2000 since, okay. This reminds me of what they did with Rhodey in Iron Man 2. The, uh, I was never, even when I saw Iron Man, and I loved Iron Man, I wasn't really a big Rhodey fan. And, but Terrence Howard had this one line near the end of the movie that made me 
absolutely love him as an actor, and I'm going, now I give a damn. It's when he's, when Iron Man leaves, Terrence is, and again, I'm not saying as voted, because I'm talking about the actor. Terrence turns, sees the Iron Man suit that I guess is eventually supposed to be a war machine, and he goes, next time, baby. And I was like, now I want War Machine. Now I want to see him as War Machine. So anyway, the movie ends, and there's this big controversy. I can't remember. I don't care. I barely even bothered. So Terrence Howard is no longer uh, Rhodey, and there's all this big uh, backlash, and everybody was complaining. And Disney basically went, we don't give a damn. We don't care. And we got Don Cheadle. Now, I don't have anything against Don Cheadle. It was just that Iron Man 1 made me like Terrence. And then Disney said, screw you, you're getting Don Cheadle. And what pissed me off the most was in Iron Man 2 at the beginning when there, there's the, uh, the court scene or what the hearing scene. Don Cheadle, or Rhodey, goes, it's me, I'm here, deal with it. And I looked at the screen and I said, no, <laughs> F you, Disney, I don't have to deal with it. I don't have to accept it. I don't have to like it. That's what this was. That, that's what the Hulk is. It's literally Disney saying, F you, it's him, he's here, deal with it. No. I don't want to deal with it. I don't have to deal with it. But you Marvel, you, you Marvel zombie brain dead idiots went, okay, can I have another Disney? You just, like if there was, a, like obviously you couldn't do a gradual change between Terrence and Cheetah, obviously. But you could have at least, at least given us a chance to accept the new Hulk. No. Boom, there's the new Hulk. And you and you try and you try and like mask it or fog it over this the one of the cringiest scenes in the movie. With with him and uh Ant Man. Oh I don't want to have a, I don't want to take a picture. Take a picture. I don't want to it's just because you know what we want? We want a Hulk where we can have, where we can get a selfie with. That's the type of Hulk we love. How did you know, Disney? All along, we wanted a, we wanted a nice, safe, gentle Hulk. How did you know? It's the same thing with Thor, right? It's like in the beginning, in the actual beginning, of Endgame, we have a pissed off, vengeance seeking Thor. And then the next time we see him, five years later, he's just, it's like, it's, it's another, it's him, he's here, deal with it. Because as, 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 as directors and as writers, we don't give a damn and actually think that we should even give you, the audience, a, a reason to even care. We could just, we'll just do it and deal with it. And you know what most of you did? You know what most, you know what most of you did? You went, yep. And you know what? They were right. They were right. Brain dead pieces of... And the, the other thing that pisses me off is that he was a joke. Thor, from the moment you saw him in New Asgard to the end of the movie, you had no reason. There wasn't even an arc of redemption. He didn't even have an arc of redemption where he wanted to be taken seriously again. He became and was a joke for the rest of the movie. You, at not, there was not one point of the movie where you could have taken Thor seriously. Even when he had both Milner and Stormbreaker in his hand, okay, he couldn't defeat a, a, a Thanos without the Infinity Gauntlet. 
Are you serious? He could take out, he could take out Thanos with just Stormbreaker in like five seconds in, in, in Infinity War, but with both Milner and Stormbreaker against the Thanos without the Infinity Gauntlet, he was struggling and was, and was almost killed if it wasn't for Cap. You never took Thor, you never had to take Thor seriously. Now, I like Thor, okay? I like, okay, normal Thor is badass Thor, okay? It's like saying normal Black Panther is badass Black Panther. There's no difference, okay? Thor's normal state of being is badass, but in this movie, he wasn't anywhere close to normal Thor. And he was a joke. He was, he was played for, Thor was played for laughs. Okay, now, Quinn, Quill being played for laughs, fine, that's his character. Ant-Man, Scott, being played for laughs. You're introduced to him as a goofy, funny character. We were never introduced to Thor as a goofy, funny character. So when you, the Thor movies weren't doing very well. Thor 1 and Thor 2 didn't do very well. And then Guardians of the Galaxy came out and it did incredibly well. And it had a funny, goofy main character. Ant-Man came out and it wasn't expected to do well, but hey, it did really well. And guess what? It had a funny, goofy main character. Well, Thor wasn't doing really well in his own movies. And two movies that shouldn't have even have done well, did well. And they had funny, goofy characters. I know! Let's make Thor a funny, goofy character! And you all loved it. Y'all loved him in Thor. Oh, God, I want to do Thor Ragnarok. You. Thor Ragnarok was the start. Okay? See, before, before phase, well, not even phase three, I think it's simply before Thor Ragnarok, you had mediocre movies, you had not really great movies, but you did not have any of the level of stupid that started from Thor Ragnarok on. I think there was one movie. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I can't really remember. There was another movie. Anyway, whatever. The point is, that's why you have funny, goofy Thor. Because his movies weren't doing that well. So, they went, hey, people love Quill. People love Scott. Let's do the same thing with Thor. What the hell? It's not like they know what they're doing. I just... And it and it's the justification, you morons give. Okay, I call them MCU apologists. Yeah, I know, huh? Edgy, huh? It's all these videos and all these people making videos def pointing out the mistakes and still and going, okay, here's how this stupid works. I'm going to, here's the stupid, but here's the theory to explain the stupid so you don't feel so stupid when somebody points out how stupid you are for accepting the stupid. Now, I'm watching some of these th theory videos, I guess is what they would be called, and I'm wondering, who's your target audience? I mean, the idiots who accepted the, the stupid, they don't care. So, you're not explaining it to them, and those of us who actually had the intelligence to notice the stupid 
and able to realize it's stupid, if we watch your videos, we actually have the intelligence to realize how stupid your theories are in defending it. So, I'm thinking, who's your audience? And I'm going, oh my God. Disney is their audience. Their audience is Disney. It's like Disney, if you, if you, you know, advertise on our, on our channel, if you give us free stuff, if you, you know, let us go to like the premieres, we will cover your ass. We have your back. No matter how you screw up, okay, we'll be here to, to, to justify it for you. It's like when, it's like how the Russo, it's like damage control. Like the Russo brothers, article after article, interview after interview going, here's how this worked, this is how this worked. Why didn't you put that in the movie, morons? Because why? You didn't think you were going to get called out on it? Guess what? You got called out on it, and now you're screwed. But you know what? Not really, because all of your Marvel Zombie fanboy fans were going, see, see, they explain it. Does the explanation make sense? No. Who cares? They explained it. This movie has failed during the movie, and it has, it, it has so much failing stupid that it carried off into the, into the real world. Into real life, sorry. Whatever. I don't know what else, I, I, I mean, I don't know what else I would need to, I mean, unless I draw you finger puppets, or, or, just, okay, anyway, I'm gonna, I'm, I, I'm, I'm rewatching Infinity War, because I wanted to do a video on that, because, it's not like, it's not like the stupid started in Endgame, believe me. It, and it, it didn't just start in Infinity War, it started way before that, but. And it's like I'm watching it going, oh my god, I forgot this. It's like I blocked it out, it was just. <sighs> anyway. Hopefully I'm done with Endgame at the very least. 